Oh, today I received two gifts. One, this little nut goes on here. And we'll need to clean both threads out because it's a little stiff. It, it does start, but it's a little stiff. And that goes on the mirror. Um, I'm not sure if there should be an olive there or not. For whatever reason, I have lost mine. Um, if there should need to be an olive there, then I'll just uh, I'll get a plumbing one, I'm sure. And look at what else I got. This little bit of snake tape there, as they call it. This is NOS. Brand spanking new. Never been on a car. Original factory part. Oh boy. Why am I showing you this? Because I can gloat. No, actually, that is not the reason. It's kind of... This shit is still out there. Even after all these years, this is still out there. And, and this I got from my, uh, my parts supplier, Mr. Jack White. And I know I keep mentioning him, um, and I will, because he does me good. Um, he, his prices are fair, um, and he ships the stuff straight away, packs it nicely so that it doesn't get damaged. I mean, you can't ask for better than that. So, you know, again, if any of you guys need saloon parts, mine's a Mark II. I've also got parts from uh, S-Type from him. Um, he also does uh, the, the, the older ones, or the Mark 9s, Mark 7s, I believe. Um, all saloons. So absolutely, absolutely amazing. And again, uh, that's the guy. Jack, Jack White. Number 540-743-4037. Can't praise that guy enough. Look at that. Isn't that... Oh. And this, would, this would just come off. This is, yeah, that's, that's no big deal. This would just come off. But I've got to take this to my body man now. So what I am going to do is I'm going to put tape on here to, to try and give it a little protection while the body man has it. Um, he, he's very careful, but, uh, you know, shit happens. And uh, if he damages this, he's going to have to buy a new one. And he ain't going to be able to get one like this, that's for sure. So, uh, yeah, he, he don't want to damage it. I can put money on that. He's, uh, he's a very careful guy. Okay, uh, right, and all I've got to do now, of course, is fit the, uh, the bar. Holes are already drilled. And uh, oh, it's even got the little rubber protectors on. <laughs> Actually, the rubber's gone quite hard, <laughs> which, which is hardly a surprise, considering how long it's been sitting on there. But at least I don't have to repair mine now. Um, I will be selling my, uh, my old one. Um, I don't know what for. Probably about 150 bucks, I would think, is a fair price for it. Uh, it's got a little distortion in it. It's not perfect, um, but it's not terrible. And if you haven't got one or yours uh, is really terrible, um, the one I'm going to be selling uh, will be uh, even better. So if, if you're interested in that, um, the uh, my old grill, um, just uh, email me, gstargarage uh, at uh, gmail.com. And I'll take some photographs of it and send it to you. I will be uh, getting it in the next couple of days because obviously I'm going to take this to my body man and I'm going to retrieve the old one and then put it out there. And I can guarantee you the money will be going towards something for the Mark II. Don't know what yet. Or maybe to a decent camera. Hmm, trick, trick. Which one? I tell you what, if you decide to buy my other group, you tell me. Do I put it towards a decent camera or buy some more Mark II parts with it? I kind of know what I want to do. All right. Thanks, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching that a little bit. Um, onward and upward. I'll put this in uh, another video when I record something else of interest on the Mark II. Hello, boys and girls. Not sure which video I'm going to insert this clip in, so if it appears odd, too bad. Um, as you can see, I really care. <laughs> I kind of, kind of do, but you ain't ever going to change me. I am me. When I watch videos online, quite often, and uh, people are, you know, will it start, will it start? Um, or they're trying to diagnose a problem. Um, one thing I always do, and it's yet to fail me, because it 
at least points me in the right direction. I don't say it's the be all and cure all. Um, but you never know when a vehicle won't start, whether it's timing or fuel or spark or fuel. So um, assuming, you know, you've checked your timing and you've got everything correct in that respect, um, you need to see if the vehicle will start. Uh, I'll get a can of brake cleaner. Um, you can use uh, starting fluid, which is probably the correct thing to do, but I use brake cleaner because I've always got cans of brake cleaner hanging around. And spray it straight into the throat of the, uh, the intake. And then turn the engine over. If she fires, great, you got spark. If she doesn't fire, you haven't got spark, so that's something you need to sort out first of all. Also, it gives the engine a chance to run and it will cough and splutter a bit. And, you know, maybe then it will suck some of that fuel through and you get it running. Um, it, to me, it, it's just a, a quick, simple way of uh, getting a vehicle to diagnose itself. Now, if you guys out there have got uh, another method to test, to do things, um, that is perhaps better than mine, please let me know. I, I mean, I'd love to hear it. I'm always willing to learn. But I always found that that one works extremely well. A few shots of brake cleaner or starting fluid down through the intake, turn the ignition on, fire it, or turn it over, and if the fucker fires, great, you got spark. Now, okay, I'm not saying it's going to run well, it may not, but uh, it's certainly something that gives you a, a guide as to where you need to go, what direction you need to um, move in to fix the problem that you currently have, which is, my baby won't start. And one other thing, I guess this is kind of a, like a wine and wines thing. These guys that do the uh, the YouTubes and they go out and in a field and they're trying to jack it up with a cheap ass AutoZone jack to pump it up in the air that was made in fucking China. Guys, you know, you're doing this for video. You've obviously got a few bucks to spare. You should have an onboard compressor in your vehicle, uh, an airline and an air jack, and you just shove the damn thing underneath pump it up, take the wheel off or whatever. And, you know, you don't struggle with wrenches because you've got an, an air compressor and that'll get the wheels off. I mean, obviously, you, you probably need to soak a lot of them in um, a PB blaster or whatever. But, at, uh, I mean, do you struggle just for our entertainment? So any of you that are watching this that go, oh, yeah, Gary, we do this just for your shits and giggles. Okay, great. But it's awfully frustrating when you're sitting there watching going, Guys, oh, you, you, you know, you've got this $30,000 fucking trailer to pull it out of the weeds, but you haven't got a simple little air jack and a compressor to pump it up in the air, take the wheels off. And I just find that amazing. If I was doing videos of rescuing vehicles, I'd equip myself with maybe not the best equipment, but certainly something half decent, a few planks of wood and a nice air jack and a compressor and a, a, a impact wrench. You know, we, we don't need to see you struggle. We need you to do the job, and get it done, and we go, wow, yay, rescued that. Great, terrific. And then he put it on the back of the trailer. Or, um, and another, this is another little thing for me. On these trailers, they have these little ramps you pull out. Now, I know it costs more to have like a big sheet to pull out, a platform, but I guess it was made of aluminium. Um, if you had that and you just pulled it straight out, then you don't have to worry about the wheels falling off of a bloody stupid little 18 inch wide ramp. And also you could then use perhaps those um, dollies Maybe. Maybe dollies with bigger wheels rather than those silly little wheels if you're in a muddy field. They're just thoughts. 
They're just my thoughts. Do with it what you will. Good night. Okay, one other bit. Uh, I understand that when you're trying to start a vehicle that you don't know how long it's been idle. You don't want to suck shit out from the gas tank. So you supply your own fuel. You must make yourself up a little rig that will hold, let's say, half a gallon of fuel uh, in a container that is perhaps uh, on a tripod of some description or some way of fixing it to something on any vehicle. You know, it could be a bungee cord, it doesn't matter. And then you can connect the fuel line through to the carburetor or maybe the pump, depending on the application. Rather than having a squeegee bottle and a funnel and squirting fuel in and hoping you don't splash it, where an old HT lead is sparking away and you set fire to everything. It worries me. Oh, shit. It ain't me that's doing it, so why should I care? But I just look at it and go, why? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing it that way? You really should think about what you're doing. Think about the uh, consequences of what you're doing and how it could go terribly wrong. Because fucking Sod's Law will get in there. Sod's Law, if anything can go wrong, it will go wrong at the worst possible moment, causing the most damage. That's Sod's Law. Good night.